but racket number one, BAM drops article, down. big drops in big drops. pending home sales and home showing traffic. So I guess pending home sales and home showing traffic would be what's down. Okay. So uh, 35% year over year pendings, you mm -hmm. may call them under contracts or escrows in your market, 35% year over year drop. That's the largest in eight years. We can show the Redfin chart here. Mm -hmm. the, this is Redfin doesn't have any data before 2015. So according to Redfin and, and how long they've been collecting the data, it, it's the biggest drop that they've seen since, since they started actually taking account for this data. Largest drop in pending sales in the last eight years, year over year, change in the four week rolling average of weekly pending sales. So if you're on YouTube, you can see this chart. The only drop this quick, this fast in pending home sales since 2015 was April, 2020. Of course, everything stopped on a dime in March. You had a straight down drop, which was 32.9% of a drop in pending sales. Right now, we just saw as October closes out, a 35.2% drop in pending sales, larger than the COVID-19 pandemic. Nicole, that does that surprise you? We know that sales have dropped significantly, mm -hmm. but when you compare it to that moment in time where the whole world stopped, does it surprise you that this drop right now in pending home sales year over year is as significant and you know it's actually well, it's more, greater than and it could be as we go into november and december it could be in the 40s does do, do you step back and say whoa it's bigger than i thought it was uh when i see these numbers definitely it's definitely bigger than i thought that it was um but i will be honest i i certainly feel it um and i know that all of our agents are feeling it but you no know, looking at the number it definitely it it is it is a little surprising to me for sure absolutely i mean you okay. couldn't go anywhere in 2020 i mean this is you you physically couldn't go anywhere or you know people were afraid of others coming into their homes so um I, yeah i'm 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 shocked the year over year inventory if i look at the northeast inventory's down year over year. So there right. was actually more inventory in 2021 than there is right now in the Northeast. That's not the case though for every market. If you're on YouTube in the comments, what's the case for you in your market? Is inventory up year over year or is inventory down? If inventory is down, Nicole, like, like our market, for example, it's you could it's say, awful. well, it, it's down 20% mm -hmm. and pendings are down 20%. That is actually the numbers for the state of Connecticut. Every state, every market is going to be different. So you could say, well, okay, there's a drop in inventory. It's correlating to this drop in, in pending sales. But there are some markets uh, on the walkthrough recently, Shannon mm -hmm. Gillette was on there. She says in the Phoenix area that she serves, the greater Phoenix area, inventory is skyrocketing. It, it, it is it going is that investors at a, are investors ditching. Is that where the inventory is coming from? It's coming from everywhere. People are are doing one, two, three hundred thousand homeowners are doing massive price reductions. One, two, three hundred thousand dollar price reductions on properties that are listed at about a million dollars. She's seeing inventory continue to rise, and prices are reflective of that fast inventory rise, and and they're being pushed down. Okay, I'd assume that with prices dropping, inventory rising, pendings are down in that market. Of course, across the country, as Redfin, uh, you know, states here, it's down thirty-five percent. So, in the comments, what what's it? What's the inventory relative to the drop in pendings in your market? Because there is that context. But let's pop the chart up one more time because when I look at it, it's significant for this moment in time, because it's happened very quickly. That drop here at the end, like the last month of October has been just straight down. So if you're straight in a down. market th that experiences seasonality, you know, where right. you have the winter, you have the holidays, right? November, snow. December, snow, yeah. January, in those types of markets, January can typically be 
a time where, you know, people are like, I'm just getting out of the holidays. I don't, right. I don't want to put my house on just yet. Yeah. So it's almost like a three month window. I want to wait for my trees to blossom their flowers. There's this, there's that. You like mm-hmm. to wait for the Super Bowl, which is getting pushed back later every single year. Now I feel NFL like it is longer. really late every year. It's Yeah, well, ever since you said a hey, Super Bowl's when now the they're... market starts, they started <laughs> moving the date back. Pushing it away from us. You know, they don't they don't want you to have a good spring market. Clearly not. Let, let's go regionally here. Uh, the pending home sales index, PHSI, described by NAR as a forward-looking indicator of home sales based on contract signings. It dropped 79 and a half in September. Uh, let's break it down by region, though, so, so we can talk a little bit more localized. The Northeast PHSI dropped 16.2% month over month to 64.2. Okay, 30.1% lower than September 2021. Uh, so the Northeast as a whole, pr- pretty big drop there. The Midwest right. index dipped 8.8% month over month to 80.7, down 26.7% from a year ago. Uh, so a much so everything on here is a it, Northeast had the biggest drop. Which okay, so maybe like I was just looking on on our radio show recently at Connecticut that maybe Connecticut's lagging some of the Northeast. Um. But the Midwest dropped 8.8%. The South Index declined 8.8, uh, 8.1% month over month to 97, 30% lower than a year ago. The West Index faded by 11.7% month over month to 62.7, down 38.7% from the same time last year. So that's a more significant drop in yep. the West than anywhere else. Uh, and showing, obviously, traffic is still declining. So showing activity in September dropped 17% year over year. So you, you've got less showings. Makes sense. You have less buyers that are qualified in the market. Uh, there are markets where you have less inventory, which could drop showings as well. Uh, but you ultimately have less people pulling the trigger and getting into contract, getting into escrow on the home of choice. So there are less pending sales, 35 plus percent year over year in the country. Uh, to me, the downward pressure is real. It's significant. This downward pressure that the Fed has created on the housing market is something you can't get away from. You're not going to escape it in the winter of 2022 going into 2023. There's belief, there, there's a real estate news.com article that I was looking at, and they're talking about is the spring market going to like, be a traditional spring market? Well, if the interest rates and these kind of things stabilize and maybe even drop, which some people believe that, some people don't, mm-hmm. then maybe you do see a burst of you know, activity and demand in the spring and you have a more traditional spring market. Or you could have a spring market like we've never seen before because the winter leaks into the spring and more uncertainty and this downward pressure just continues as the Fed has the crosshairs in of the real estate market or the Fed has the real estate market rather in their crosshairs. Here, here's some other indicators, Nicole, of uh, home buyer activity. Google searches for homes for sale down 28% year over year. That was October 22nd. The Redfin home buyer demand in index, a seasonally adjusted measure for requests of home buying services from Redfin agents. Well, okay. was down mm-hmm. 35% year over year and dropped 11% in the past four weeks. Lowest level since May, 2020 touring activity as of, October 23rd dropped 27% from its level at the start of 22 compared to a 7% increase the same time last year. That's showing time data. Purchase mortgage applications for the week of October 21 were down 42% 42. year over year and dropped 2% week over week. These are These are numbers that you can't be blind to as a real estate agent, as a real estate professional. There will be deals. There will be deals in your MLS all year in 2023. Likely every single day, something's going to go under contract and something's going to close mm-hmm. and there'll likely be plenty of them. But you will ha- you cannot blend in to get your name on those deals. You cannot be vanilla. Nicole White, you're going to have to be something other than vanilla in 23 to get your name on those deals. If you I'm know not what vanilla. I mean. I'm not vanilla. I'm white chocolate. White chocolate. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> no? Is that the same? Vanilla and white chocolate? No, it's totally different. No. 
You like white chocolate? I actually don't mind white. I'm a dark chocolate fan, but. Yeah, I don't like yeah. white chocolate. Yeah. It depends it on what it's good. on. Now, if you put it on like a chocolate covered pretzel, it's pretty good with like the salt. Tastes a little chemical to me. Mm, I think it depends on what kind of white chocolate you're having. But yes, Ooh, it does, you get the it good little, stuff. I get the good stuff. Yeah, there's a candy store down the street. Yeah. Yeah. Agents, you better bring the good stuff in this market be, because these numbers aren't getting better anytime soon. If you're in a seasonal market, really pay attention to you know what you're going to be doing. And one of the ways to pay attention is to generate more leads. Hey guys, appreciate you checking out this episode of The Real Word. If you want the full episode, go over to the Broke Agent YouTube. That's where we're hosting the full podcast. If you want to continue to see the segments broken out and the short clips, stay right here on The Real Word YouTube.